welcome to my new YouTube video. My name is Katie, I'm a full-time artist and I'm really excited to share that I have partnered with Derwin Art and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of their new range. So they've brought out a new ink tents range and they've sent me some wonderful goodies. As you can see it's a little bit beaten up and didn't completely arrive intact but I haven't opened this yet and so I'm really excited to go through it and share it with you. I'm going to be doing some swatch tests as well, so I'll be doing that and then showing you a piece of art. So I'm really excited to get stuck in and then create with you. I've also kindly been given an exclusive discount code for Derwin Art. So you can use the code inktense-km, I'll pop that on screen, and you'll get 30% off any Derwin product. I'll leave all the terms and conditions down below, but I thought that was an amazing offer, so you get 30% off, and hopefully this video will not only show you how to use some of these Inktense products, but also inspire you to buy your own and have a play. So let's get stuck in. Okay, I'm going to open this one last. Uh, so I've got some Inktense paper here. Uh, what I really love about ink tents, and I do have a few myself, so this is the little jar that I keep on my desk and you might have seen that I've worked with these quite a lot before with dipping them in the water and the thing I love about them most is the quality of line I can get and also the intensity of the colour, which I'm sure we'll see with a lot of the ink tents products. So that's really cool to have some actual ink tents paper, which it says it's watercolour paper, it's 100% cotton, so it's going to be really good quality. And I'm going to be putting this through its paces with water application, but it is 300 GSM, so we'll try that out later. Uh, then we've got a Derwent Twin Hole Pencil Sharpener. I have not used a Derwent Pencil Sharpener before, um, but what I really like about this is that it does have like the two different size holes. Obviously a lot of coloured pencils that we use as artists are different sizes, so um, that's really cool that they'll both be able to fit. It's quite hefty as well, so I feel like that will last a long time. And then some erasers. So I was reading the press release about these, and this eraser is actually like a special formula to erase some of the Derwent Ink Tense pencils. I have tried to erase them before with other erasers, but it didn't work, so I'll definitely be testing this out and seeing how well it does. It's supposed to be non-abrasive, so it won't affect the paper quality, so that will be an interesting one. Okay, so I have seen a lot of exciting things about the ink tents blocks. So I've got the XL ones here and then the normal size ones here. So let's open these up. Ooh, some really nice colours. Again, it's going to be all about the vibrancy on here and once you put them down and then add water, I think the intensity and the vibrancy really intensifies. So I think those will be really interesting to use and I'm looking forward to mixing them up. And I'll do a little image at the end with all of these supplies so we can see how they actually work together. And then these ones are the new XL block. So I saw some of the promo for this on Instagram and I thought it was really cool because they showed like grating them and cutting them up and you can really be versatile with these, so that will be interesting. Oh yeah, here it says draw, paint, cut or grate in XL format for broad coverage. So I might have to get out some larger paper to give these a go. They're really, really thick and chunky. And although I won't use these colours on their own, I'm going to see how they mix and work together. And I can obviously also mix those with the ones in this with the different swatches as well. Okay, then we have oh a little ink tense paint pan set. I didn't know that they did uh, ink tense paint actually, so that will be really interesting to use. This will be a good one for testing plein air as well. I think the both the blocks and the pencils will be good to use plein air because, um, especially with the brushes that will come onto, you can take it outside and not have to take a whole amount of tubes of paint with you. But then as well as that, we've got this paint pan set, so that's really exciting. Let's open these up too. So it seems like a really nice travel size. Oh, and it even comes with this little swatch sheet as well. So these are the colours in here, and then you've got space to mix them. And there's also a little water brush pen there as well, which slots in nicely. 
So that's definitely going to be fun to use. And then I've got some here. So this one is a spritzer. So this will create really nice textures. I think what really excites me is using some of those ink tense blocks to really create a lot of texture. And that's something I'm always trying to strive for in my work. So this will be a really interesting one to use on the paper. Again, I'll give that a try on that ink tense paper as well later in the video. And then these are the push button water brush pens. So I've got a range of ones here. And I've actually never used these push button ones. I do have a water brush pen, um, but I've not used these ones before. So we've got the large, the fine, the large chisel tip, and then the medium tip. So a really good range there. And again, I think these are super helpful, not only for in the studio when you're not having to worry about jugs of water, but also plein air. So I'll definitely be taking these with me when I do a plein air adventure with all these Derwent Ink Tents products. And now let's look at the pencils. I mean, look at this tin. Just this artwork is so vibrant and gorgeous. I'm really excited to do some like wildflower studies and landscape drawings. And like, as you know, if you've seen my artwork before, I really do up the saturation and intensity in the colors that I see. So I feel like the intense range is just so exciting and I'm really looking forward to using them. Oh wow. Well. I mean, seeing them all lined up like this and all the colors, so exciting. I can't wait to get using these. So this is a little booklet all about the Inktense range. So like I said, I do have that little um, jar of Inktense pencils, but I did find that there were specific colors and shades that I was missing. So they've expanded their Derwent Inktense pencil collection to be a set of 100, which is what I'm lucky enough to have here. So underneath this tray is more trays of coloured pencils, so let's have a look at the whole range. I also think these will be really good for drawing animals as well, I think like the butterfly on the tin of this one and like tigers and exotic animals, it just it feels like they would be really good for that. As well as flowers, oh wow, look at all these blues and greens. I'm definitely going to get a lot of use out of these. You'll have seen that I used a lot of the blues from my jar of pencils in this ocean piece that I did recently. So these are definitely going to be fun to use and lots of lovely greens for my landscapes. And then there's one layer at the bottom, which are browns, a few more greens, some greys and darker blacks, dark mink, some really amazing shades in here. So definitely going to be fun to blend them up together, see how they mix. So I'm going to move on to our swatches and we can pick a few. I'm not going to swatch this entire set. Blending them together isn't something that I've done before. So we're going to test that out as well as putting it on the page and applying the water straight on the paper. I haven't used the ink tense blocks before, so we're going to be approaching that from a total beginner mindset. And as always, if you have used these tools before, please do let me know and share your tips down below in the comments because I love this community for sharing things like that and there's a huge amount of knowledge between us so please do share your ideas down below as well. So now we are on to the swatching part of this video before I'll then move on to the process part and show you how I use all of these pieces in a piece of art. So I'm starting with the Derwent Inktense blocks and sorry about my big head in the way but I'm just putting those down the side using a few of the different colours. Like I said, I'm not going to swatch every single shade because, especially with the pencils, that would take a really long time. But if there is something you're interested in, then I'll definitely do that in the future. And here are the XL Inktense blocks. So again, I'm just taking a couple of these. And I'm using this on the Derwent Inktense paper block. And you can be really rough with these because they're not going to snap. They are super chunky and so you can use either the side and the edges or you can use the end as I just did there upright. And you can mix them dry, so I'm putting the yellow on top of the blue here and it does make a green. But what really is impressive to me is when you add water and just how vibrant and colourful these become. So I'm using one of the water brushes and you can see here, like especially with that pink, just how vibrant it becomes. 
and the blue as well. They are so pigmented and like even putting down a little bit of the block creates a huge amount of colour. I'm also really loving these water brushes. You can get a really fine line with them but I'm also enjoying this chisel tip here where I'm blending in the white and the black. And I also wanted to try out the little spritzer so I'm putting that straight onto the page. The paper is 300 GSM and it's cotton paper so it takes the water really really well and it puts a really nice amount on the page. And then I'm just blending that together with the water brush pen and you can really see how well they mix together. I will show you how they mix dry as well with the pencils later on but here they are with the water and I was super impressed. You can see how thick the pigment can come which is what I really liked. And I also wanted to try the water first and then the intense blocks on top. So I tried it dry and then water and now I'm trying it the other way around. And it made it so creamy. So you can really see when I'm adding on the yellow and the orange just how much it softens. They don't feel like chalk pastels. They definitely feel different to that. They're not powdery in any way. But I love the effect that happens when you do add the water and I'm trying to show the difference there. Just... Because of the texture of the paper, you can see that when you use them dry, obviously doesn't go through every single bump in the page, whereas when you're using them wet, it does cover it really, really well. Now I'm moving on to the paint pan set, and this comes with a little water brush which I just put together, and you can also see that I have used this before. So I did take it plein air sketching, which is going to be a piece on my Instagram grid soon, so you can see how I used it outside. But here I am just again using some colours from the paint pan set and blending them together. I really love the colours in this set. They're very bright and vibrant again of course and I think that it's going to be really handy again for taking outside and using plein air. I do swatch all of the colours on this one just here at the bottom and the blending between all of them is so lovely. I didn't have any problems with them not blending together nicely so again I was pretty impressed. And now onto the set of 100 pencils. So again, I'm just picking out a few of the colours and I'm going to swatch them all on this paper and then I will add the water. Some of them I do find that you can't really tell the colour when they are put down. And you'll see what I mean when I add in the water because especially on some of the darker shades, you can really see a difference. So I'm just adding the water here and trying to leave the left bit dry so you can see the difference between. You can see with the purples and the blues just how much of a difference the water makes and on this very last row you'll also see it with the browns and the greys. So here you wouldn't know that that was like a burgundy red and the same one with the swatch above with it being brown. I thought that was really interesting. So I think doing a swatch card is definitely helpful if you are getting these in the future because it does change a lot when you add the water. Now I'm taking the pencils, again testing the blending like I said I would earlier, and I also want to do the exact same exercise but blend with water. So at the top is the one without the water and below I'm just adding on just to try and blend the shades together and see how it fares. It does intensify the vibrancy but it blended really nicely and I was impressed with how they blended dry as well. Now I'm using the Fancy Sharpener. This was so easy to use and it made a really, really sharp point. So I was really impressed with that. And like I said earlier, I like how there are twin holes for the larger pencils. So just like I did with the Inktense blocks, I'm putting water down first and then applying the pencil on top. It makes it much creamier. It goes over the paper really nicely. And I also try to blend them together this is a sort of lurid green colour and I wanted to see how that fared with the orange and because the water was down first it really softened it, it made it super easy to blend and merge into the paper. So I was really impressed with that and if you've seen on my channel before you'll know that I like to wet the nibs and the lead of the pencils. So I just used the brush pen to do that. You can see at the top was when I applied the colour straight to the nib of the water brush and then I put that down as the top swatch. Then I applied a bit more water to the nib and applied it there and underneath that one I applied it completely dry. So you can definitely see the difference between those three applications and I really love how versatile they are. I think that what excites me the most about all of these products is that I can experiment and play and look at the colours here on this overview of all my swatches. 
I think it's really fun and like the amount of textures that I'll be able to get really excites me. So I hope this video inspires you to do that as well. So as well as the swatches and the play that I did here, I wanted to show you how I apply them into a piece of art. So in a minute we're going to move on to some art process where I'm drawing some different wildflowers, again on the Inktense paper block, and you can see how I would use them in my own artwork. So here we go, I'm just getting some of my supplies ready. The only one that I didn't use in this one was the paint pan set because I decided to use that outside when I did my plein air exploring and I just wanted to see how I could use these various mediums in different ways. Now it's definitely going to be something I'm continuing to explore and play with and I will be using them to create lots of texture but I also wanted to show you how you can use them in a delicate way. So I do three wildflower studies and I just find it really interesting how versatile you can be with your technique. So I'll walk you through them as we go. But as always, if you do have any questions about these products, then please do let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. So here I am grating and cutting off some of the ink tents blocks. This was a technique I didn't show you when I was swatching, but I wanted to try here. And I am mixing the XL blocks with the smaller ones. And mixing them together, it does create quite chunky little bits of pigment and you can grate them but I just tried it with a scalpel and I was so impressed with how thick it is. I could really create a kind of paint. It didn't feel like watercolour, it felt like, like really thick gouache and I was really impressed with how that blended together especially using the various blocks. And then I'm again using the water brush and applying that straight to the page. As always I haven't sketched first, I'm just sort of finding my way and using some references. I'm continuously grating some colours and adding to it. I really like having variation in my colours, so I really like the effect when you're blending them together and adding on different shades. And here I am using the little blocks straight to the page and showing the difference between putting it on the paper palette I did use and then applying it like this. So it's the same, I'm just layering up these colours which don't look very natural. But once I add in the water, I knew that I'd create a nice green shade. And again, it's just as intense as before. And I can just keep adding water in with the water brush. I do have a piece of kitchen towel to the side where I kind of rinse off my brush, but it's really nice to not have a water jug on my desk that I'm not worried about knocking over or anything. And then the next technique I'm using is applying the pencils dry and putting those straight on the page. And then I will come in again to soften up the lines and really add that intensity with the water. And I really love this technique. You don't have to fill the entire thing that you're drawing with pigment because when you do add the water, it does blend it all together. So even if there's a little bit of white underneath, when you add the water, it will cover that. So you can use the pencils quite sparsely and still get a huge amount of colour. The next thing I wanted to try is again softening the nib and the lead of the pencil. So I put down the colour first with my brush and then I'm going on top straight with my Inktense pencil. And this creates a really lovely textured effect. I've used this before in my pieces and my artwork so you'll have seen me do this in previous videos. But I just really love how much it softens the pencil, it feels really nice to use. And again, like I say, I'm always looking for texture in my work and this is a really easy way to do that. Here I am coming straight in with the Inktense blocks, but I'm mixing that in with the Inktense pencils as well. So these can be used in the same way. You can use them wet and dry, but you can also use them together. And so I really like that effect. You can see just how vibrant it comes when I'm putting on the water. You can see that the Inktense blocks does create some little pigment dusts but as soon as you add water, it does dissolve. And where the pigment is so thick, I can dip into that strawberry and use it on the other one. So it doesn't dry immediately, which means that you are able to use different pigments and blend and you don't have to worry about it drying super fast. And then for this last flower, again, I'm putting down my dry pencil and then I'll come in with my water brush. This one, I don't use any Inktense blocks, so this last flower is just Inktense pencil. But again, I'm just sort of roughly putting that on the paper. So again, I'm not covering all of the white and it does look quite scribbly and messy. But once I add the water, it completely changes the look of it. 
I really like how you can still see some of the texture lines, so I'm going to keep that in, but if you wanted a really thick coverage, then of course you could add in more pencil. But like I said, it's really versatile, and here you can see I'm wetting some of the lead of the pencil so I can add on my little strawberry dots so it does layer now that that red layer has dried first. So you can continually come in. I'm adding on some extra details just to neaten up some of these wildflowers and I've wetted the nib of this pencil as well because I really love that effect and the texture it gives. So I'm just going around some of the leaves and you can see here where I'm dipping it into water and then coming straight back onto the page. My desk was a bit of a mess at this point, but that's no surprise. But it's really fun to try out these new mediums, and if you have any other techniques you'd like me to try, then do let me know. So I'm going to leave you to enjoy the very final parts of this piece and some lovely close-ups, but I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope that you found it interesting. If you do want to try some of the Derwent Inktense products, don't forget to use my code inktense-km for 30% off. And thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. I will see you next Sunday with a new YouTube video. See you later. Mm -hmm.